Good afternoon, gente. Down here with uh, Bob Rotherham. We're going to get a couple little historical facts about this beautiful place in El Salvador. So, Bob, why don't you tell us about um, what year you came down, a little bit about your adventure. Well, I showed up in uh, La Libertad in El Salvador in 1973. And that was sort of a time when local beaches back at home, I'm originally from Miami, and when I say home, anywhere in the States, surfing was getting very popular, beaches were getting a little bit crowded, and people wanted to do some exploring, right? To find out, you know, find new waves, because, you know, the big thing was uh, people in California mostly would go to Hawaii, East Coasters from uh, Florida and the whole entire East Coast of the U.S., they'd end up somewhere in the Caribbean, you know, looking for waves. And so my buddy and I, Eric Penny, we decided to go somewhere different, you know. So and there's a land bridge in between California and Central America and Mexico. So we basically packed up an old VW van, pop top camper, and headed off for, uh, originally our, our goal was to go to South America. And uh, of course we found just fantastic waves in Mexico, had a really good time. Uh, uh, I spent probably about, well, we probably spent about two months in Mexico, you know, looking for waves, and luckily we, we found waves everywhere we went. We were right in the season. And, uh, of course, there was none of this technology where they could forecast all these great waves. You could do a strike mission. It was usually you came for, you know, if you wanted to get wood, good waves somewhere you, south of the border, you'd want at least a couple of weeks. And the nice thing about that was in the old days, you know, there's people that come on a strike mission. They come down here, uh, especially in El Salvador because it's so convenient and close. Uh, they can come down for, for five or six days and they don't even really get into the culture or anything. In the old days, you'd hang out and, you know, you had to learn to speak a little Spanish and uh, find out how great Latin America is and was, you know. And, uh, so my buddy and I, we hung out at a place named Petacalco for a while, which is a wave that doesn't even exist anymore because they're in the process of time of building a dam. And the dam, of course, it blo blocked off sand and rock flow and slowly but surely the wave disappeared. So we got it just right, you know. They were just in the, starting to build this, this dam. And uh, we actually ran into a guy named Craig Peterson and uh, who did a lot of famous uh, surf travel articles. It, the thing was to spin the globe and go somewhere, right? And he clued us in on La Libertad in El Salvador, which we were heading this way anyway. And uh, he just like made it a little more romantic and we had some little info before we got here. So we basically checked out a lot of spots, you know, going down almost to the border of Guatemala. Uh, and, just drove through Guatemala and, 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 and came upon El Salvador. And the very first day, we, of course, we stopped at Zunzal, which was the popular place in that time. And there was only a few surfers. Surfing was just starting. This was in 1973. And, uh, and yeah, and it was just like, it was just glorious is the only word. You have this country that's got like within an hour's drive, there's eight different points that work on all kinds of different swells and sizes. And you know, like in off season, there's one place that might have some waves that it's no good in on season because the waves are too big for the place. But basically in El Salvador, if you look around, there's waves almost all year long. And of course, you know, we ended up in La Libertad at Punta Roca, which its original name is actually Punta Chilama. And when I settled in here, I met my wife and settled in here. We named our restaurant, we started off with a couple tables, Punta Roca. So people started coming to the place, Punta Roca, Punta Roca, Punta Roca. So basically, even uh, geographically on the map, it is now Punta Roca, it is not Punta Chilama. <laughs> so they actually named a, a spot after, after my restaurant in, in, in our place. And, uh, it just, things progressed where the place got more and more popular. And by the end of the 70s, it was actually starting to get crowded down here. And uh, then the Civil War came along, it lasted for 12 years, and everybody just, the first bomb that went off and everybody cleared out, right? Uh, I was probably, my family and I, 
were, were the few that, that, that hung on. You know? Yeah. And, and in all run, uh, I can't say I regret anything about leaving the U.S. and living down here. And, uh, you know, we've been very successful at what we've done, a lot of hard work. And I have two sons, uh, Lonnie and, and Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy was, uh, was probably the first uh, sponsored surfer in El Salvador. And that's how we met Tony Roberts, right? Uh, when uh, Jimmy went on the, uh, on the crossing, the Quicksilver crossing, he was sponsored by Quicksilver. And he basically went with the Costa Rican team, the guys from the Caribbean, it was Gilbert Brown, and uh, gee, what was the other guy's name? Uh, Nino and a few other guys. Uh, and that was the way we met Mr. Tony Roberts, who eventually ended up here in La Libertad also. And uh, we've had a really good relation ever since. And uh, La Libertad, El Salvador, is probably the most brainless surf trip you could ever go on in your life. You know, the airport is 45 minutes from the beach where there's a world-class right-hand point. And you can get off the airplane, walk through customs, and you can be here, like I said, in 45 minutes, and you don't even go through a traffic light to get here. Once you get in town, there's a little congestion with the traffic, but I mean, basically it's it's like, just, you know, you're, it's, it's a free skate the whole entire way. Uh, you know, it's a very, uh, uh, the people here are very pro-American, pro-tourist, they'll go out of their way to help you. In fact, in the 70s, uh, the Turismo board here, they called El Salvador a country with a heart. All their advertisement, they had these big hearts. You know, <laughs> come to El Salvador because the people are just so friendly. Yeah. They'll go out of their way to be friendly. And it's like in the, in the beginning, you're kind of go, you're almost suspicious. You know, what's this guy want from me? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're so nice. And uh, gee whiz, this whole area. I mean, you know, I'm a restaurant owner and hotel owner, but you can go almost anywhere you go. You're going to get a decent meal. You can, you can, uh, there's cafeterias, which they call comedores down here, and there's restaurants from, you know, $5 to $20 a plate. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of something for everybody, and of course we have a famous Playa del Tunco, where the nightlife is at, and uh, on the weekends it's, you know, if you want to go out and have a good time and, and get a little uh, Latin drinking culture, I mean, a little bit of everything, it, it's there, and you're going to have a good time. And, uh, gee, I've been here now living and making my livelihood basically since 1974. I've uh, been through wars, great surf, uh, you know, crowded conditions, uncrowded conditions. Uh, you've got all these different options of waves. In this area, then you can go east in the country, and there's another couple of points down there that are very good. So the the, the country is just like Turismo here in this country is basically based on surfing and beach. Wow. But well, Salvador, I think music is probably their best art form. Yeah, they uh, because there's there's you know there's uh, mariachis that you know go around and offer their services in different restaurants and stuff. And, and the people just, just love music, and, and it's like a lot of times music in Latin America is, is quality is volume. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of noise, in, but there's a lot of really good quality musicians here, yeah. without a doubt. For sure. Yeah, it's it's uh, you'll get you know mostly the bands that you hear around here, which sometimes we call them the palum palums. Uh, the majority of them are, are going to play cumbias, yeah. which originate in Colombia, but for yeah. some reason, Salvador kind of hung on to the cumbia more than salsa, which is Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. And they love mariachi music, yep. also, which is rich and really good. And the cumbia music, you know, it, it tells a story about, you know, always some maybe lady in the neighborhood that's really sexy or something. And, and there's, 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 you know, it's always got a really good kind of double face story about the about the song and if you know if you understand Spanish at all and, and the rhythm is, is you can, if you go to one of these dances and they've got a cumbia dance and, and you don't dance it's because you're epileptic or something you know the, the rhythm is just so catchy there's it is. yeah and it's very easy to be on. you're gonna have a good time and of course now the new new fad is, is the reggaeton 
which is, uh, I'm kind of basically not super into reggaeton. But I mean, it's got a very catchy rhythm to it. Yeah. <laughs> and you got all these beautiful gals that are shaking, so I mean, bring it on. You know? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>